Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to another video. Y'all, this is going to be a fun one. I'm really, really excited about this one. I literally just decided to do this uh, Monday because I went to the bookstore. So here's the thing. I missed out on Independent Book Day because I had markets to do. So I did not get to go in the store and shop. So Monday, which was April 29th, I went to the my local independent bookstore and I was like, okay, I'm going to make up for it. I'm going to buy some books. And I bought my stack. I bought my stack. And as I was talking to my favorite book early in the bookstore, she mentioned, or I actually mentioned, oh, I have this book. And the book that I was talking about is this book, My Heart is a Chainsaw. So if you guys saw my videos from a few weeks back, I went to Greensboro, I went to a local bookstore there, and the bookstore guy there, he recommended this book because I was talking about books that I like. And this book gives, you know, like Final Girl, Scream, Friday the 13th, all the horror film goodness in a book. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get this book. So I was like, I have this book. And she goes, oh, the next one just came out. And I'm like, wait, there's a next one? She's like, it's a trilogy. Of course it's going to be a trilogy because film, horror film realness. So, yes. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> there's, there's more? So, I was like, oh, yes. I'm getting the second one and I'm getting the one that just came out. So, now I have the entire Indian Lake trilogy and y'all we're doing a reading vlog so i am changing it up because y'all know i read my books in order or for those of you who have been here i read my books in the order that i buy them because if i don't i'm gonna spend two hours trying to figure out what to read but i'm, I'm pulling an audible i'm calling an audible we're going out of order and we're gonna get into this trilogy and i'm excited so the three books are my heart is a chainsaw don't Fear the Reaper is book two, and The Angel of Indian Lake is book three, and these books are by Stephen Graham Jones. So I do have all three of them, and I'm going to start, of course, with the first one. So I typically don't reread the back of the books, but we're, we're changing things up for this reading vlog. I'm going to go ahead, let you guys know what this one is about, and we're going to get into it because May is going to be frightening. So the first one, My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones says, you won't find a more hardcore 80s horror fan than high school senior Jade Daniels. And you won't find a place less supportive of girls who wear torn t-shirts and too much eyeliner than Proof Rock. Nestled 8,000 feet up, in the, up the mountain in Idaho, right alongside Indian Lake. And as of this summer, Terra Nova, a second home celebrity, Camelot, Celebrity camera being carved out at, wait a minute, let's run it back. <laughs> okay, and you won't find a place less supportive of girls who wear torn t-shirts and too much eyeliner than Proof Rock nestled 8,000 feet up the mountain in Idaho right alongside Indian Lake, home to both Camp Blood, where's that from, site of a massacre 50 years ago and as of this summer, Terra Nova, a second home celebrity, celebrity camera being carved out of the National Forest. That's not the only thing that's getting carved up though. This, Jade knows, is the start of a slasher. But what kind? Who's wearing the mask? Jade's got an encyclopedic recall of every horror movie on the shelf. But will that help her survive? Can she get a final girl train enough to stop all of this from happening? Does she even want to? Isn't a slasher exactly what her hometown deserves? This novel explores the changing landscape of the West through Stephen Graham Jones' distinct voice of sharp humor and prophetic violence. Y'all, I cannot wait to get into this one. So that is the first one in the trilogy. I'm going to take you guys along with me as I read these books, and I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it.
so I wanted to jump in and give you guys an update about where I am in my heart is a chainsaw and yes I am literally in my bed with a hoodie I actually like to sleep in the cold not freezing cold but in the cold cold enough for me to feel like I need a hoodie in order to go to sleep and then as the night goes on I take off my layers so here we are because I'm cozied up in my bed reading this book I am currently on page uh, let's see 108 I'm on page 108 so I'm already 100 pages in and I am enjoying the book now I will say so the book is told by the story is told by Jade but part of her personality is that she I won't say she rambles but you know how somebody's put, giving you a lot of information and sometimes you get lost <laughs> Because like, I found myself having to reread things, but it's because like she's super passionate of about thrillers. So it gives you Randy vibes, but I don't want you to get the impression that it's like, so they're not making a move. Well, okay. So she's not setting out to make a movie in the sense that Billy Loomis and Stu and all of the other ghost face were. But she does, she's into slashers, like she talks about, like she's completely into slashers. And basically what it is, is that she is seeing things happen in her city, in her town, that are signs of a slasher movie. But sometimes when she's talking, like I was literally like, oh my gosh. Like I feel like the first, until I got used to the writing and how she was going to be presenting the story... Um, probably like the first 30 pages, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, I like the story, but I don't know how I can handle her talking to me. But now I'm like, okay, I'm in it. The story does start off with the scene that all good horror movies start off with to get things going. And, you know, she references like 80s horrors and 90 horrors, 90s horrors, and pulls out the things that, you know, this is happening and this is why and kind of stuff like that. So I really do like the story and I think I'm going to love it. Um, with this, even with, you know, me having to get through like the first 30 pages and kind of be like, okay, am I really, I was kind of like, oh, I don't think I'm going to like it. And I felt bad, <laughs> especially since I already bought all three of them, but I was like, you know, one might not be that great, but no, now that I'm at the hundred page mark, I am definitely enjoying the story. I must say I am loving the character, Letha. That y'all are going to meet just because she is who she is. So I thought that was a very exciting twist. Because I feel like that's not the norm in most slashers. Like I can't think of any. I don't want to give it away because I kind of want you to read it and see it. But I don't think I've seen any slashers where that character, that particular character looks the way they look. So that I was like, okay, I'm down. I want to I wanna hear about it. One thing I did thought was very interesting. So she is. Native American. Well, it's called Indian Lake and it's in Idaho. So you know that there was a indigenous population. But I do think it is, um, it was interesting that he does refer the author, well, actually the character, but of course the author wrote it, refers to them as Indian and not um, like indigenous. But it could also be that if you are indigenous because of what your people will call you, just refer to yourself as Indian because that's what people call you. So I did think that was interesting. Um, but she is half Indian. Um, so she kind of talks like you'll hear her reference things that could be cultural cultural, and she'll say like, oh, maybe it's just the Indian in me or whatever like that. But um, so those kinds of things are in there. I definitely don't think Stephen is a person of color. But anyway, that's kind of how he writes the story. So the main character is uh, an indigenous person. And then there's some other people of color in here. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very interested to see how... The rest of this is going to play out. Um, so that is my update on the first 100 pages. This book is like 300. All right. So I am doing a check-in. I am like maybe 100 or so pages from the end. And here are my thoughts right now. Like, I like the book. I do. However, I feel like there's not a lot of thrill in the book. Um, so, like, people are getting killed but for the most part, you never actually see it happening in the book. So it'll be like, you know, Jade is off, you know, walking down the street 
And then something happens and you see ambulances and all that kind of like commotion. And then, you know, someone was killed. But it's not as though you're like watching it happen until like maybe 10 or 15 pages. So, so closer to the end, she, well, she saw who, she saw something and something was going on. And then she saw that somebody was dead. I don't want to give it away because then it'll kind of give that moment away. But that was like. So far, the only time where there was that actual action happening, where you're like, oh, someone's being chased like the ki by the killer or whatever. Killer. So, that's that. However, I do, f I, I'd be interested to see this, like, play out in a movie, because I have it in my head, but I wonder what it would look like, like, if they actually made the trilogy a movie. Um, I do enjoy it, though. I feel like it is kind of... I feel like this one is maybe more set up. So you get to know her. You get to know the town. You get to meet this first slasher. But then, like, in two and three, hopefully, it's more kill, kill, kill. So I do like it so far. It's not like... I'm in, I'm invested in the trilogy, but I don't feel like this is the best thriller in the world. So that's how I feel right now. Hopefully, I'll get this done today because it has taken me a little longer to get through the first book. But I will give you guys a check-in when I'm done. I'll just wait until I'm done. That way I can give you a full kind of check-in of the first book. Book one of the Indian Lake Trilogy is done. And I am totally ready for the next one. I'm happy that the next one is on my shelf. I'm going to grab that book. It's late. Am I going to start reading it tonight? I don't know. But I know I'm going to grab the book and I'm going to put by me. Because I will start reading it. If I don't start reading it now, I am going to read it when I get up in the morning. Y'all, the book gave... It, it gave horror, it gave slasher, it gave I want to see this in a movie. I will say I didn't know who the hell the slasher was going to be. Like, I was really surprised at who it was because I was totally invested in who I thought it was. And then I got invested in who I didn't think it was, but I was like, hmm. But then I was like, no, that can't be it. And then it made me think that that was the person again. But then I got invested in the, like, y'all, it had me all over the place. It had me all over the place. And then it revealed stuff in the beginning that I was like, oh, that can't be true. I'm glad that's not true. Turned out to be true. Had me in shambles. Like, I didn't like it. And the, when, when the horde, like, because what I was saying earlier is that I felt like, I was learning about a lot about the area and maybe invested, but I wasn't getting like the kills. Like, you knew a kill happened, but you didn't see it. I saw it. <laughs> like, this book was so graphic and descriptive. Like, I could literally see everything in my mind and I think it would make a great movie. So, hey, is this going to be a movie? People are turning other books into a movie that I don't really care about. This will be a good one to be a movie. But what got me in this book is there were like highs where... Like, okay, well, first of all, things would happen, and you'd be like, oh, dang, I'm mad that happened, right? And then, like, you get your hopes up, just for it to be, like, psh, just playing, <laughs> like, and I was just like, oh, my God, this book is a roller coaster for me. It's got to be a roller coaster for Jade, because it's all over, like, it, not all over in a bad place, like, it's just, like, every moment where you thought something good was going to come out of it didn't. I'm still wondering if certain people are dead or not. I'm still trying to figure out what happened at the end because I didn't like the end. And when I say I didn't like the end, it's like, why are you ending the book here? You know how, like, I don't want to give it away, but I just wanted more. And not because I didn't feel like it gave me more enough at the end. So I was saying that a lot of the book, I felt like it, it was the build up kind of like you're learning the backstory. So interesting, but you're not seeing the kills, even though the kills are happening. When the actual slashing started, like, really started, the book gave you a nice stack of pages. It did not, like, rush the ending. You had a very, like, I mean, this thing was slow, m slow moving in the sense that it didn't say slash, 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 here's the killer and we're done in, like, five pages. Like, no, it gave you enough. What I'm mad about is after all of that, the last like scene of the book, I'm like, you can't end it here. And that's why if I had read this when this book came out, I really would have been pissed because I would have had to sit and wait for the other book. But I'm just glad that I can just grab it off my shelf because I need to know what happened. And um, like I said in the video, the video, the beginning of the video, I have not read the back of book two or three and in this sense I'm actually really glad I did that because it is a trilogy I would not have wanted to read the back of that book and it revealed something that would have told me 
what would and would not have been true. So you know how you're reading the book and things are happening? If I had read the back of that book and it said, Bob is running around town, then when Bob looks like he got killed, I would know Bob's not dead. Or if the back of that book said, now that Bob is dead, if I'm reading it thinking Bob's going to make it through, I would already know he was dead. So I'm glad I have not read the back of book two and three yet. Um, because like I said, when I when I was like, oh, I have book one of this, and she was like, it's a trilogy, I was just like, okay, I'm getting two and three. I didn't read the other back, so now I can read the other back of book two now that I finished book one, and I'm going to share that with you guys. But um, so in that sense, if you have not read any of these and you want to, I'll, well, when I'm looking, before I read the back of the book, I'll let you guys know if there's anything that will spoil what's going on in book one. Um, because of course that would suck because then book one's not going to be as exciting. So, but yes, I'm very excited. I'm very invested and the ending pissed me off, but not in the way that it didn't give me enough. Cause I feel like, okay, we needed to end the book. Like, you know how you don't want the movie to drag on, but it's just like, why that gotta be the last thing you show me? Like, why is it the last thing I'm looking at? Um, so I'm hoping where the book picks up at um makes me happy uh the whole final girl thing like and i actually said this earlier in the book about the final girl but i was like oh and that actually ties into where i think if you were to think deeper it's like i, I can't even say that without giving it away <laughs> anyway that that even that whole like part of the book was interesting the whole story of the final girl and who is the final girl and why they're the final girl Loved it. So book one, yes, read it. Read book one. Let's go ahead and jump into book two. All right, so I have book two here. Don't Fear the Reaper, Stephen Graham Jones, book two, A Genuine Horror Superstar, Esquire. Um, let me look quickly on the back. Um... Okay, I can read the back of this because it doesn't... Uh. Okay, actually it might kind of get... it. Okay, do not listen to this if you have not read the back of book one. Um, I try very hard not to give away, like I try not to spoil books, but reading the back of this, if I was, if I hadn't read book one and I read this, I would be like... Oh, but why? And I would know that something was going to occur to have caused this to happen. So I'm going to say if you have, if you want to read this series and you don't want anything to possibly spoil anything, don't listen. <laughs> Go away. And then you could just hear my thoughts on the book after this part. So let's get into it. The Indian, the Indian Lake Trilogy Book 2, Praise for Don't Fear the Reaper, Superb expertly blends snappy graveyard humor with nail-biting suspense. That's just one of the blurbs. Let's get into the book. On December 12th, 2019, Jade returns to the rural lake town of Prufrock, Idaho, the same day convicted indigenous serial killer Dark Mill South escapes into town to complete his revenge killings in this riveting sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw from New York. Oh, wait, it's a chainsaw. I was like, that's not the name of the book. From New York Times bestselling author Stephen Graham Jones. Four years after her tumultuous senior year, Jade Daniels is released from prison right before Christmas when a conviction is overturned. Coming home is not easy and Jade may never admit it out loud, but she's happy to be back. However, that same day, convicted serial killer Dark Mill South seeking revenge for 38 Dakota men hanged in, in 1862 escapes from prison his escapes from his prison transfer as a blizzard descends just outside of proof rock dark mills south's reunion tour began on december 12 2019 a thursday 36 hours and 20 bodies later on friday the 13th it would be over so this one is apparently about another indigenous person because, of course, we do find out that Jade is Indian. We find out she's Native American, which in the book, I use the word Indian here, and I bring this up earlier, is because when it's written, that's how they refer to her. Um, and the interesting part is somebody 
else um, who meets her later kind of says something that would be more accepted, kind of. But I think that's um, interesting. Now he's saying indigenous person. So um, not that I think like, I think it's just part of the story and how they're telling the story about the people where they live. But um, yeah, so that's how they it's being said in this book. So um, for those of you who have already read this series, I'm a little pissed she was in jail for four freaking years. Like, because you know what happened. And I'm like, that's, ugh. I'm going to make sure, like I put, don't listen to this part. I'm not going to try to spoil anything, but I read the back. So if you listened, you know that she was in jail. And I'm like, why the hell was she even in jail? Because there, I mean, I know why, because I read that part of the book, but I'm like, it makes me think that something else happened. Clearly it was overturned, so there was evidence to prove otherwise. But y'all, that pisses me off. But anyway, I'm excited to read Don't Fear the Reaper. We have a new killer. Now, I think this one's interesting because we already know who the killer is. We know it's Dark Mill South. So, is that the name? Dark, yeah, Dark Smith. Mi yeah, Dark Smith. Shit. Dark Mill South. We know that's the person doing the killing. So I think that's kind of cool that we know who the slasher is. Or do we? Because I feel like, are you going to flip it around? Like, what is the story in this one? Is it more about her catching the person that we know who's doing it? Anyway, very excited to read that. So I would definitely give you my thoughts. The first book was like, right I am midway through book two of the Indian Lake trilogy. Don't Fear the Reaper. And I'm going to say this book starts off with the action so one of the things i said in the last one was like it felt like they were giving like a lot of backstory and it was slow not slow the it people were dying but we didn't see the action we just heard about it this one here is like slash 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 like there are slashers happening and we are witnessing them we are in the moment so it's like you're watching the movie you see the killer and you see the killing being done so I really, really like it. I will tell you, I was so, there are a lot of things that made me go, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Like, I don't like that. There were a lot of things that surprised me in this book. Um, so good and bad. So I will definitely say, um, if you're having a hard time with the first one, push through, get to the second one. Because like I said, the action is going to start be at the end, but the action just starts right away in this one. Um, now, I will also say this one sets it up where you really don't know who's doing what. Like, I feel like in book one, even though I was wrong, <laughs> even though I, I, I was wrong, I feel like there were, I mean, I guess you had options of the killer, but I feel like in this one, it's like, hmm, they keep throwing out like these theories like, oh, but it could be this person. It could be this person. So I definitely like it. This is four years later. So growth, you know, Jennifer's grown up. She's not a kid anymore. Um, the city has changed. Other people in the city have changed the things uh, or the town of Proof Rock, um, the way things are. But I am really enjoying, enjoying it. I am more than halfway through. I'm like on 260 something and this is like 450. So I'm hoping I will finish this one soon so I can jump in the next one. But it is definitely worth it. I literally, as these kills were happening, I'm on my toes because this is true. Like I'm watching a movie slasher. So yeah, definitely worth reading. I will check in and hopefully this one gives me a good good ending and you know sets up book three really well and I like I said I think book three is like a little bigger than this one so um yeah we'll I see. am done with don't fear the reaper and I like it a lot better than the first book mainly because like I said with book one it I felt like it was a lot of background information this one started off hot with all the killings this one okay let me talk about the things I didn't like the chapters are so long. Like, I feel like the chapters in the first one are long as well. But, like, this book literally had a chapter that was 100 pages. And for somebody like me who likes to use the chapters as, like, progress, 
that was kind of hard. And because it's one long chapter, the, he does do a good job of kind of breaking it up. So it's like, okay, this scene is with this person. I guess kind of like a movie. This scene is with this person. And then it breaks it down. And like the next few pages might be like another scene. But because the chapters were so long, that that for me, I would have preferred um, shorter chapters. But overall, I loved this one so much more because there's more action. You were seeing it right away versus getting all of the backstory of the area. I'm going to say, poor Jade. I feel like Jade can't catch a break. And I have not read the back of book three yet. So I, I know how it ended with Jade. But I don't know what that really means. Because, you know, they don't really fully tell you. They just kind of allude to what might be happening. And once you read the book, you kind of... Once you read book one, come into book two, then you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. So I'm really excited to read the back of book three. I'm going to read it with y'all. Um, my other thoughts on the book. This one had... Okay, I feel like the first one, one thing he will do is give you a million and one different suspects. And I feel like this one had multiple suspects as well. Um, at one point, I feel like they brought in another killer because the story was not being told by someone else, like, saying they saw the killer. It was almost as if it was being told from the killer's point of view, but the person never materialized. Like, or at least I don't think they did. I don't know. It was like, it, I feel like there was kind of like a, a, a couple random spots that made me go, what? Um, there is some like magicalness in it, but I guess overall it's a horror about somebody that you tried to kill and he, they get stabbed or sliced and they pop back up. So I guess all of it has magical, but there was one aspect that I, at first when they introduced this thing, I was like, oh, this must be because of X, Y, Z. And, um, the way the story was going made me believe that. And then when it got to the end and something happens, I'm like, oh crap. And then I really thought it was because of that. And then they get to the end and it was like, oh, that's what that was. But it, it seemed kind of random, but that's like the magical part that they threw in there. Um, and then there was something that happens at the end. Like I said, I feel like his books take you up and then they just pull you back down because something you're going to want so bad, or at least I, my bad, or at least I want it so bad. And then I feel like it was snatched away from me. So without trying to say too much, but I really like the book. I think that the twist of the killer was it like twisted and then twisted again. And I was like, wait, huh? Who? Who is the person that did this thing? Um, so I think he did really well with that. But with that being said, something takes place in the way that they were wrapping up the book. I'm like, wait a minute. Does anybody else know? Or are we just going to let that slide? Because it just seems like it wasn't made clear. So there's a lot going on there. Um... The last one is called The Angel of Indian Lake. It is the third book in the trilogy. Let's read the... Well, there's not a back. There's an inside. So, the final installment in the most lauded trilogy in the history of horror literature. I'm kind of mad this is it. I'm like, can we not get a franchise? Can we not? I wouldn't mind it. It's been... What is up with four years? The last book was four years apart. And not four years in real time because... Book two was written, came out last year. So it's not four years in real time. Like, I think the first one came out in 21, book two in 23, and this one in 24. Um, but what is that with him spreading it out four years? Anyway, oh, for those of you, and it's kind of hard to not have spoilers because I couldn't read, like, the next book. So once again, you might not want to listen if you haven't read any. But if you're reading along with me, let's go. Um, it's, it's been four years since Jade Daniels last set her foot in Proof Rock, Idaho. Why she keep coming back? Why? I wouldn't keep coming back. Like, even Sydney kept her ass out of Woodsboro. Like, why are you, well, I mean, she did come back, but she, like, was away. You know, anyway, I'm gonna do this again. <laughs> 
it's been four it's been four years since Jay Daniels last set foot in Proof Rock, Idaho. Since then, her reputation and everything around Indian Lake has dramatically changed. There's a lot of unfinished business in her hometown, from serial killer cultists, dang, to the rich trying to buy Western authenticity. Authenticity. But there's one aspect of the savage history of Proof Rock, Idaho, no one's got the metal to confront. No one except the final girl making her last stand, this time for everything. New York Times bestselling author Stephen Graham Jones has crafted an epic horror trilogy of generational trauma and stolen hope. It's the story of the American West written in blood, and it's the story of one girl who doesn't know how to give up. That did not tell me what the heck this book is about. <laughs> like, I know she's coming back, and apparently there's going to be another killer. But I don't... Okay, I'm, like, literally flipping through the book, which I shouldn't do, because there are a couple of folk. I'm kind of like... The other one left me at, like, okay, how are they doing? <laughs> but, um... One I know, and that hurt me. But... Okay, so right now I'm, like, 126 pages into... The Angel of Indian Lake um, definitely starts off with action. You know how like you watch a movie, you read a book, and you're like, I hope this character is going to be there forever. Oh, this this trilogy does not give you that. Like, Don't get attached. Um, I will say, I feel sorry for Jade because like, it sucks being the person. It sucks when you're the person trying to help people, but you always seem to be the person at fault for what happened. And then I'm confused as to how they let a certain person that is clearly a killer just kind of disappear. So I wonder if that person is going to pop up somewhere in this book because I feel like that would make sense. Um, especially with the character or not the character well yeah the character that they're describing as a killer um there's a lot going on there could potentially be three wait one one two yeah like three killers right now trying to figure out who's who um i definitely feel like book one might have been my favorite even though book one had a lot of history in it I think that starts off with a bang and I don't know if that is kind of like where you watch like a movie well no I'm not gonna say that because like I feel like Scream gets better and better except for like number four it sucked but I just feel like I am enjoying all the other books I don't know if it's because I'm reading them back to back where I just feel like oh my gosh this is just a lot because these people are getting pummeled one book after the other um but I do enjoy it like I said this one starts with action and it keeps going pretty much the weirdest random stuff that's happening like I do well I don't want to give it away but the the attacks um you know, they're happening when you least expect it. And I kind of like that, which is kind of like, okay, how can no one be able to identify who did this thing yet? Um, but yeah, it is it is sucky when you're like reading Jade's story and where she is now. Um, because of all the trauma she's gone through. Um, so that like pulls at my heart because I'm like, dang, you out here trying to fight the fight for the people. But people still don't understand you. And then you're going through all of this stuff. Um, anyway, she does have a community. May it be small. And she does have something to fight for. So I like that. Y'all, I um, said I was going to check in at 2.50. I'm pissed. Because somebody is not going to make it. And I am pissed. And the, you, okay, this is probably the biggest twist of all three books because I was not expecting this person to be the person slashing people. Like, okay, at first I was like, I think, y'all, I'm tired. <laughs> Nine, I, 93, book three is giving me two many words is giving me too much in Jade's head like it started out with a bang but then it got real wordy but y'all around two something everything is going to shit and I am 
pissed because this is not what I expected. I don't know how to feel. And this always happens. And it's so crazy because they say something, they talk about stuff in like book two a lot that kind of alludes to like another movie. And I, I'm just pissed because I should have seen it coming, but I did not see it coming. So I'm just going to leave it right there because I don't want to give it away. If y'all are reading book three with me and you've gotten to that part, you know what the heck I'm talking about. You're going to be pissed too. I'm going to be back because I need to figure out, like, I don't even care at this point. Like, I don't even know if I care how it ends because somebody is that I want to be at the end of this book, even though I did not think I was going to feel that way from book one, is not going to be there. And I am pissed about it. We have finished the Indian Lake trilogy, y'all. And I'm mad that it's over. Okay, first of all, I think there was only one killer and I need someone to clarify this. I think there was like one killer and then a bunch of assholes. Like I think that's what was going on because I swear, like I said earlier, like I think there's like four potential killers, but I think there was like one killer, two assholes and somebody who was just trying to be nice. That's what I think is going on. I will say, the it, this book was a lot. I feel like 150-ish pages probably could have been cut out. And the book would have still been okay. Because there was a lot. And it took me so long to read this book. Like, I think I've been reading this book for like... But it's not just because the book was long. I also had a lot of stuff to do. But for a couple of weeks. But I enjoyed it. Now, the end had me like... Are you serious? Are you serious like the last hundred or so pages that that was it like stuff was happening craziness people was going missing and like literally I got to the end and I was like y'all cannot end this book without resolving one of the biggest freaking thing poor Letha like but I do like how the book ended um it was good it kind of threw me off because then he started writing it different and I was just like Wait a minute, is this like happening now? And then like something that happened before, like is she, is she magical? I don't know. Anyway, loved it. Loved it. It was a little long winded, but I loved it. And I love the trilogy. I highly recommend reading it. Book one is definitely my favorite. I think at one point I said book two is my favorite. And then I went back to book one. Book one is my favorite. Um, I would say for... For most of book three, okay, book one is my favorite, book two would be my second favorite, book three would be my least favorite, only because I feel like, yes, there was a lot of unnecessary, like, pages in there, but I love, like, like I said, that last hundred pages or so, when it, like, when it gets to the dam, like, the dam at the end, like, that last hundred pages, okay, we good, I'm with it, but, like, it just was a little wordy. Overall, absolutely loved it. Absolutely love the Indian Lake trilogy, and I am ready to read some more about him. I was by him. I was in the bookstore today, and I was like, eh. but then I was like, no, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, which I could have just bought it because, like, I have so many books like that I need to read. It's gonna take me a while to get to it, but I need a break, if, especially if the other book are long chapters. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. Hopefully, you enjoy if you read along. The Indian Lake Trilogy, I was editing this, like, just now, and I was like, I gotta talk fast, because this video is, like, so long. Hope you enjoyed it. For those of you who are new here, my name is Sarah. Thank you for watching. Do all the things to do that you need to do so you get notified, so you, like, don't miss anything. And for those of you who keep coming back, thank you so much. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.